Hi, my name is Hannah Bells. Many of you may remember me from the Fansly course I made in 2023. While the majority of that information is still good and up to date, I just wanted to touch on some topics that have changed and just need a little bit of updating. In my first video, I talk about the differences between Fansly and OnlyFans. Since then, I've had more time to try out OnlyFans and can provide a bit more clarity on the differences between the two sites. Currently, both OnlyFans and Fansly offer an 80-20 split. This means that 80% of what is earned goes to the creator, while the other 20% goes to the site. Both sites also offer referral codes to help the creator earn 5% of the earnings a new model makes when they use their link to sign up. This 5% is taken out of the 20% that's already withheld by the site. So users that sign up with a referral link still maintain their 80% of their earnings, 15% goes to the site, and the remaining 5% goes to the model that referred them. Which, speaking of, if you find these tutorials useful, be sure to use my referral link found on my website to sign up. OnlyFans still has the name recognition advantage over Fansly, but Fansly is slowly starting to build a bigger name for itself. And despite being a smaller site in comparison, it still has a fantastic algorithm that helps new people find your content organically from the site itself. A big part of this is because of how Fansly handles content display options. OnlyFans forces its creators to either lock all their content behind a single paywall or make it completely free. While Fansly allows not only for a mix and match of free and subscriber only content, but also allows for multiple sub tiers and pay per view options. The ability to diversify income and availability of your content is much more flexible on Fansly than it is on OnlyFans. In the end, the two sites are pretty much the same and offer many of the same features, and it really all goes down to personal preference. There's also no rule saying you can't use both, so feel free to double dick like Papa double dick. Damn it. Now the majority of what I covered in my original video on how to post on Fansly is still the same. So I definitely recommend you look at that video for more in-depth explanation on how everything works. However, since making that tutorial, Fansly has come out with a new easy mode feature that I'd really like to go over for you. Easy mode, like the name suggests, simplifies the permission options available for media posting. In this media mode, it gives three checkbox options for you to utilize. Require purchase, which allows you to set a specific pay-per-view price. Require subscription, which allows for you to set a specific sub-tier. And require follow, which allows you to set the post to followers only. For many creators, this easy mode is all you need to get set up for your channel. However, if you want to add time-sensitive restrictions, have multiple but not all sub-tiers given access to a post, or set different pricing for different tiers of subs, then you'll want to look more into the advanced mode. And you'll definitely want to check out my in-depth tutorial on this because I go through every single setting, what they do, and how to utilize them. Streaming on Fansly is still in beta, but I had a few questions in my comment section that made me realize that I missed a few talking points in my video. To start, you must be verified and you must have at least one subscriber to unlock the streaming tab on Fansly. Without those two things, the streaming tab won't even show up in your creator dashboard. A lot of people also had questions about streaming software and if Fansly offered mobile-friendly streaming. When using a laptop or PC, there are a lot of different streaming software options that you could choose from. I personally recommend that you go with OBS, which is free to use and works on both Windows and Mac. Once you have that downloaded, you can follow the rest of my streaming tutorial from the original course videos. If you're wanting to stream from mobile, your options are a lot more limited as of making this video. Because Fansly doesn't have the opportunity to create a mobile-friendly app, we're reliant on phone streaming apps to transfer phone data to the site. Right now, there aren't very many options for this route, to be honest, but I recommend downloading Streamlabs if you want to stream from your phone. Once it's downloaded, it'll ask you a few questions to help you get started. Of the options available, I highly recommend that you choose camera only, custom settings, and be sure to enable your camera and mic settings. After that, your screen should look something like this. Go ahead and delete everything displayed on the screen besides your camera, including the chat box. If you want to add your Fansly chat to your screen, you'll need to go to layers, add custom item, and add URL. To find your Fansly chat URL, Go to the streaming tab of your creator dashboard and click on the three dots at the bottom right of the chat box to copy the chat URL and then paste it into the Streamlabs app. Then you can drag and place your Fansly chat wherever you like. If you want to be able to see the chat box, but you don't want it to show on stream, be sure to check the showing on stream eye off. Once this is set up, go to your account settings, scroll to the bottom and click on custom RTMP. This is where you'll be inputting your information so that you can go live on Fansly. 
To get the information you need, go to your creator dashboard on Bansley and click on the streamer tab. Here's how the information will be used on your Streamlabs app. For name, simply put Fansly. Under URL, you're gonna copy and paste the stream server information. And for stream key, simply copy stream key. Now this is very important. Make sure you do not share this information with anyone else. If you share your stream key to anyone else, then they have the ability to stream to your channel. So keep this information private. After you've entered in all the necessary info, go ahead and click save. Now you can go ahead and go live to Fansly from your phone. Streamlabs offers a lot of fun ways to customize your streams by adding images, logos, and so much more in the layers tab of the scene editor. I'm not gonna go into much detail here as customizing will look a little different from streamer to streamer, but do not be afraid to poke around in these tabs to find new and fun ways to decorate your stream. So that pretty much covers all the extra updates and info I have for the course right now. If you haven't checked out the rest of the videos in the course, be sure to watch them as I go heavily into detail on how to get the most out of Fansly. As always, feel free to comment any questions you have for me below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.